Flavor family, welcome to the kitchen on a nasty Chicago Wednesday night filled with rain, a little bit of sleet, super cold, but you know what? It's warm in the kitchen when you're hanging out with family members. We got DJ Art on the camera. Say hi, Art. Wow, that's the first time you've called me that before. <laughs> hi, everybody. Good to be here. Having a great day. Desi and Rose are taking a little nappy in back. Great day, about to get even better with a killer dinner of steak. But before we get started, housekeeping items as always. Can you hear us really well? Once again, Art, test your audio. This is Art, known as DJ Art in some small limited circles. Known also as Uncle Farturo. Uncle Farturo, T.O. Farturo. That's right, T.O. Farturo. My name is Bobby, I'm a Capricorn. We're here in Chicago. If you can see us, uh, hear us, how do you see us? Everything looking good? All right. Eagle Idaho awaits. Eagle Idaho. Welcome. Sherry, by the way, Sherry, I love seeing that a minute ago. You've lost how many pounds again? Amazing. Love to hear it. All good. So before we get started, I'm telling you the menu. Let's let everyone know where we're hanging out. Leave a comment down below. Let us know where you're watching from. Art's making a face. Anders is here. <laughs> nice. Anders, Anders from Denmark. From Denmark's in we're the still, house. We're still working on the Danish That's accent. Right. We haven't so here's the recipe tonight. I'm excited because we don't make steak very often, but I got a very special package in the mail yesterday. So we're going to make steak dinner. I have two grass-fed carrot-finished Yes, carrot finished. What a concept. Cap of the ribeye. This is just the cap that has all that fatty marbling. And this is a grass fed carrot finished filet mignon. Right? So we're going to pan sear those, butter baste them with a lot of grass fed butter and thyme and garlic. We're going to serve them up with my blistered asparagus recipe. You've seen me make it before. It's kind of a variation of the one in the cookbook. And we're also going to make, I know it's not keto, but it just seems so right to make potatoes with a. Uh, Steak dinner, we're gonna do a simple boiled potato, but the right way. Then we're gonna coat it in tons of grass-fed ghee or butter, salt and herbs. It is the most easy but delicious way to make potatoes. Uh, so let's get started. We got Fargo. We got, a, we got an Astros fan in there. She already- Astro, I saw that, in. you know. To be honest, I'm, I think Art and both I am rooting for the Nationals. Come on, you gotta go for a team that's never won the World Series before. Game seven, and it'll be the first time in history that each team has won all games on the road. I mean, that's crazy, right? We got, uh, and I'll tell you about the meet in a second. We got North Carolina here. We got Michigan, Connecticut. Anyone from around the world? Do we have anyone from Philippines, from Australia watching? Um, we can get more people though. So take the link for the video, paste it over to our Instagram story. Say, yo, Bobby and Uncle Farturo, AKA DJ Farturo, AKA uh, Tio Farturo are hanging out, what making a AKA steak dinner. <laughs> I'll keep thinking of it. Post on your Facebook wall, Bill. Yo, Bobby, this cool cat over on Facebook who needs a haircut, it's kind of shabby, is making dinner. So that's what's going on. First things first, we have to get going on the potatoes. Trivia, when you're making potatoes, do you want to start them in cold water or hot boiling water? Go. I have my water here I don't want to reveal. I have my potatoes and I have a good amount of salt. I'm going to use my Redmond Real Salt here. And we're going to boil them away. So. Kayleen says cold, Monica cold. Oh, whoa, well, cold, cold, whoa, cold. I don't, think, I don't think anybody said I that. I love it. High five, fam. That was an easy one, High right? Five. But we do it, we start easy, we get harder. Why do we start these cold? Because if you put taters in hot water, they're gonna overcook on the exterior by the time the interior cooks. So y'all knew that, right? And then what I also recommend is salting aggressively. Because yeah, you'll salt them later on, but salting them now is the only way that salt can permeate into the potatoes while they're boiling. So I'm gonna put this on my power boiler here. And I don't know, it's gonna take about, I'd say like 15 minutes after they come to a boil. So someone remind me to check on that. It actually comes to the boil really quickly. You're gonna remind them how many, how many minutes you wanna give them? Yeah, um, remind me. If you're gonna ask them to remind us. I yeah, say. well, just let me know when it's boiling. All right. Dang says way too much salt. No, see, it's not. You think it is, but dang. Oh, dang. What's the oh, rule? Dang. Oh, oh, dang, oh, dang is the hummus salad okay. dressing. What's the rule when you're seasoning pasta water, Art? You want it to taste like the sea. You want it to taste like the sea. So like I, the Mediterranean So sea. if I actually, yes. Anything else would be uncivilized. If I actually tasted this water right now. See? It actually tastes a little less salty than the sea. So that's right. Think about how much water is in there. Don't worry about it. That's how you season the tater tots. Now, I have to make some asparagus. I got to make some meat. But the oh, question is, here. I uh, take my jacket off. oh, I just get a little hot. It's we haven't even started cooking yet. So 
This meet came from a Flav City fan. I got an email a few weeks ago saying, hey Bobby, I'm a huge fan and you inspired me to finally start my own company. I've been thinking about making a beef company. It's called Shepherd Meats and it's grass-fed carrot finished. I looked into it. They finished the cattle on grass and uh, carrots the last six months of their lives. And the carrots, I guess, make it more marbled without any, any grain to it. So she sent over the biggest box. I mean, I don't even have room here. Look, she sent over... I mean, this is crazy. Look. That's, that's a glorious image right now. Yeah. Look at all that meat. Look at this, you guys. I have grass-fed beef. I have ground goat. Where's I have the ground goat. Oh, there it I'm is. Gonna, yeah, but I also asked specifically for goat ribs. So look at this. She sent me a whole rack of goat ribs. <laughs> I'm gonna pressure cook those. It should be amazing. So big thank you. Let I, me know when you're doing that. Yeah, for sure. I'm also gonna make some goat chili with this. Ooh. So the only problem is I don't have any more room. I have to go store some of this in Johnny P. You gotta buy another refrigerator. Well, yeah, I have no room here, but in the, the next house we move into, I'm gonna have two fridges and two freezers for sure. Yes, carrot as in the vegetable. Yeah, isn't that crazy? It's the craziest yeah, thing. Somebody so, also asked, why don't you wash your potatoes? Um, what's the point? They're just gonna boil in hot water, so anything on there is gonna boil away anyway. I'm not too worried about it. So I think I'm gonna pan sear the cap of the ribeye and butter baste it, but I think I need some help with you, some input. How should I cook this filet mignon? I don't want to open the oven or I don't want to turn the oven on. Should I just pan sear it? Should I like do it high, start it low? Give me some suggestions. Art's going to keep track of those. But in the meantime, I'm going to start preheating the pan for the steak and I'm going to start preheating the pan for the blistered asparagus. So in the How's cookbook- Johnny P doing? Somebody asked. Uh, he's a little under the weather. His, he was very uh, runny yeah, and asked. stuffed up yesterday, and he didn't want to come over for dinner because of Rose. Oh, so, folks asking too. Yeah, yeah asked the same question. Yeah, he, he's almost 100%. He actually might come over later on. I'm not sure. So in the cookbook, what is it served with? Uh, Bill says to pan sear and stick in a 400 degree oven for about seven or eight minutes. Yeah, I don't want to turn the oven on though, Bill. I'm a little lazy tonight. Nada says uh, reverse cooking the steak. Yeah, reverse cooking would be nice too. Laura says high heat until brown. I think I might do that, Laura. Let's do high heat, sear it on the sides too. Stangman says, uh, Bobby, use a cast iron pan 100%. Yeah, I think we'll just do cast iron for everything. Monica, start medium high, sear and just butter baste for two minutes. Yeah, I think it might take a little more than two minutes. So is this recipe? I can answer your question. You can buy the cookbook on Amazon.com. Exactly. So I'm trying to show you the version in the cookbook. You know what? Maybe it's not in. There's Does so, Art get to eat too? Hell yeah. So there's a slightly different version without the mayonnaise dressing in the cookbook. That's bacon and pecan blistered green beans with uh, ricotta stuffed pork chops. But you guys, I checked this weekend. Over four, uh, 640 five-star ratings. Amazing. I'm getting the Costco list. Uh, I think this week, this is going to be in select Costco starting in November. If it sells out and does well, it's going to go nationwide. So as soon as I get that list, I will share with you. But Amazon link is down below. Uh, thank you for the support. This book is doing beyond my wildest dreams. Anders says to use a blow dryer. To use a blow dryer. No, I don't think so, Anders. That sounds like an episode of uh, like Fear Factor or something. So I do want to get going on the asparagus and the steak. So I think the filet will take the longest. And when it comes to seasoning good quality steak, I'm a purist, meaning salt and pepper. So I have my unrefined Redmond's Real Salt. I hope you guys use my promo code for that. And I'm just gonna season the filet and I'm gonna season it all around. Don't forget about the sides. And look, some of you are gonna be like, oh my God, he's over salting it. Trust me, this is a big thick steak. It's also been suggested you cook it underground with a banana leaf um, if for I was five in, hours, for five hours. Okay, well if I was in Hawaii right now, I would do that, how about that? So, Art, tell people about salt and beef and why they're best friends. <laughs> the real answer or what you once scooped and said? No, the, the real answer. Beef loves, or what do you no, say, steak I, loves beef? Yeah, one time I said steak loves beef. But, I mean, it, if it I put brings that... Out, salt brings out the beefiness. Exactly. You, well, so, if you put too much of it, it makes it salt. But what if someone's worried about that level of salt I just put on there? No, you're going to lose some of that, too. Mm -hmm. It's going to fall off. It's going to cook. It's going to stick to your pan. Exactly. It sticks to and your pan. Look, look how thick that is, Hello. Too. He's Hello. not salting the inside of it. Exactly. The salt can only create a crust. It can't permeate to the middle. So don't worry about the aggressive salt. I always say, be aggressive, be aggressive. It's fantastic. So what oil should I cook this steak in? This is a crowdsourced meal. Should I cook it in ghee or avocado oil? You let me know. And then... Here's the deal with asparagus, which is on sale right now at Whole Foods until next Wednesday. 
The tough woody end is here, the tender end is here. So just take it like this, Art, and bend it. And usually where it pops off there is the divider line. This is really hard, this is soft. So mm. knowing that. You got fans saying avocado oil and you got people saying ghee. Ooh, ghee all over the place. Ghee pretty popular. Um, I mean, it is ghee. I mean, I don't see how it can't be popular, right? So also, if you don't want to waste too much of the asparagus, you could cut a little lower and then shave it down with a veggie peeler because this is very tough and fibrous and it's not very pleasant to eat. I've also seen beef tallow. That was just oh, one, beef one person suggesting. I that. have beef tallow. Should we just do that? Look at this. I have grass-fed Is it kind of wrong? beef tallow Cooking to cook it in its beef. own fat. No, let's do that. Let's get naughty on Flav City today, right? Cooking grass-fed beef in grass-fed beef tallow. That's what we're doing. Anders has never had ghee. Well, I'll cook something else in ghee. How about that? But these guys were nice enough. To, actually, I'm doing a video with these guys this month because they have an amazing uh, snack bar. Yeah, the Epic. Yeah. So Epic makes the beef bars that I'm doing the video for, but they also make beef fat, duck fat, uh, beef fat, bison tallow fat. Wow. So I'm going to put a scoop of that in my cast iron. Unlikely critic says, I think this is against Talmudic law. <laughs> We'll be okay There's here. There's a lot of things we do here that's against Talmudic law. <laughs> Which law is that? Is that halal? Talmudic? No, that's uh, Judaism. Oh. The Talmud? No, that should be... I oh, don't that... know if this... If, who's this? Uh, no, that should be kosher. Critic. I don't know if he's been serious or not. Yeah, no, that should be kosher. I mean, if I was fried in pork fat... I mean, I'm Jewish. I'm, ref I'm not like super hardcore. I'm re reformed. But I'm pretty sure cooking beef... And then, by the way, it's halal beef, so it should be kosher. In uh, beef fat is 100% kosher, right? Let's it's see here. Oh, okay, good, okay, good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jibri. I appreciate that. Laws were meant to be broken, says Ryan. I'm not, a, I'm not a person who plays it by the rules. I break rules. I find ways to bend them. So let's just get that in the pan to, pan to start. And then let's cook the other, because Anders wanted to see ghee. You guys know I love my Thrive Market, and this is the best ghee. This is the grass-fed organic ghee. It's so much cheaper than anything at the grocery store. And because Anders, our friend from Denmark, has never used ghee, I'm going to put a glob of this in this pan. Should I come over there or not excited Not yet? quite yet. All right. So it's actually very similar methods we're using. It's going to be and I love that ghee. in so many ways, dang man. To cook the asparagus and the beef. Because this is a blistered asparagus, meaning we ain't boiling it. We ain't steaming it. We're actually cooking it in a hot pan to blister the outside and almost make it charred while leaving the interior still a little bit crunchy. Okay, now, since you're doing high heat, we also need our splatter guards, right? I got two, $13 on Amazon. Just get them, you guys. Does Thrive ship to uh, Denmark? Unfortunately not. They don't ship out of the country yet. It's a total bummer. So the pan has to be hot, and I think because it's a thick steak, we'll go hot, hot, then lower it, Art, like the uh, America's Test Kitchen way. Lower, lower, then side, side, and be done. And I have a probe thermometer, too. We'll take the temperature. So, Art, come back here. Ryan, it, we are working on Smell-O-Vision, but it's still uh, in a beta mode. It is beta mode. I've I have emails to Zuckerberg. I have emails to Sergey Brin. They don't email me back, right? So, if your pan is not hot and does not make this noise, just take the meat out and wait. So, check it out, Art. Perfect. When the meat goes down, push down like that. I'm trying to achieve maximum contact with the bottom of the pan, and then immediately, boom, go down. I think you're about to make maximum contact with the lens, too. Yeah. <laughs> I saw some of those splatters. It's okay. I'm going to buy the new iPhone next week, so we don't have to worry about that. Now, somebody taught me to check that in about two minutes. I want to get a nice sear, but not crazy, Here's crazy deep. Timely question. No pepper, just salt only? Yeah, you know what? I feel like the pepper burns in a hot pan like that, so I'm okay with it. We don't need pepper. You going to pepper it later? Uh, no, maybe for like the final turn, I'll do that. Yeah, because we have a really hot pan now, so I'm, I don't want to burn it. Maureen Murphy says, I'm a New York City public school teacher. Bobby, you're a natural teacher, but poor Art, he always has to be the tortured student getting tested. <laughs> <laughs> Maureen, that was hilarious. That was really funny. All right, so What's up, Timley Park? now I got my pan with my asparagus. Now here's one of my recipes that is picky eater approved, right? If your kid doesn't love asparagus, if your boo, if your lover, if your mistress, if your girlfriend, if they don't love asparagus mistress. or cauliflower or broccoli, my techniques and my recipes for making those vegetables in my cookbook and on YouTube make people fall in love with them. Because your mom probably boiled asparagus and cauliflower until it smelled like a wet fart in the house. We don't do that. We either cook them in a hot oven or a hot pan 
and magical things happen. I'm telling you. Cauliflower? Even cauliflower, yeah. Oh, okay, I thought we, you were calling the asparagus cauliflower. Yeah, no, 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 absolutely not. Um, and also, I'll get to it a little later on. This is my new favorite wine. It's no sugar added keto wine that is fantastic. Tell me. Your man Finley just came through with a fourteen ninety nine super chat and an SNL reference. You know, like a de pepper. <laughs> I you, like man. a de pepper. Thank you, Joseph. I like a, Joseph. You're the man. Joseph is a longtime fan. He's a huge follower on Twitter too, and he's a big supporter of the channel. I'm gonna tell you about that wine too because it's gonna go great with dinner tonight. So I have a question for you guys, right? Speaking of the educator, school's on strike right now, right? Because ed ed educators are striking right now. Students' brains might be going down a little bit. Maybe you can lift them up right now. I'm trying to blister this asparagus and make them caramelized. Knowing that I want to blister it, should I add a little bit of unrefined salt now? Or should I wait until later on? Tell me the answer. Part two is why, right? This isn't first grade. This is third grade, yo. Give me the answer and why. In the form of an essay. <laughs> oh, I hated essays. I actually hated school with a passion. <laughs> when I graduated college, I remember jumping for joy that I never had to go back. I just was not a good student and I hated it. Nigerian Food Network just lost their appetite with your fart moment. What was, what was the, oh, no. <laughs> that's all right. We'll get you back. Don't worry. So this is not boiling yet. So, I mean, I love the fact that this dinner happens in three pans, no oven. I think it's going to be good. Now, what makes this asparagus really good is the fact that we're going to make the insane sauce. But let's check on these uh, answers when they come in. Before we do that, maybe we should also encourage people to share because we're at 595 okay. people, which is a great start. Yeah, sharing is caring. What can they do to share, Art? Share this live stream on all forms of social media that you have access to, all dating websites, your senator, congressman, whatever. Yeah, I mean, Farmers Only is a preferred one around here. Bumble, Match, they're all good. Instagram stories. Where else do you want to be on a Wednesday night before the, notice how we started earlier, before the World Series even started. That's right. Hanging out, having a good time. So everyone got it right. Y'all said wait, because, uh, yes, that's right. Wait because it pulls out moisture, right? Check the meat, Mary Wood. Thank you. Thank you. Claudia got it right. Jeff got it right. Kelly said wait, it pulls out water. Salt pulls out water. I just told y'all, I want this to be crusty and kind of burned on the outside. How is that going to happen if it's pulling out water and the swim, 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 swimming in water? Ain't going to work, right? Back here, Art. Junior Sanchez says Nationals. I, I'm all for the Nationals. Me too. So let's just see. You don't really want to disturb ooh, the sear. Ooh. So that's pr good. that's pretty good, but I'm going to let it go another minute. It's kind of pale in the middle. We gotta, yeah, I don't know what's going on there. It's weird. Got to get some more. But we're going to do a bunch of turns. So I think as time goes on. That'll work. Guys, never the Nationals have never won the World Series. The team before the Nationals was the Expos, right? Yeah. They never won the World Series. Unless you're from Houston, you got to be rooting for the Nats, right? And the fact that they were like 12 games under 500 as a major. Yeah, they, they, they were like, like an epic comeback. they were horrible. I, I have this extra splatter guard. Well, the here. Astros I certainly disagree with us on your uh, live chat here. For sure. All right, <laughs> let's talk about the wine for a second. So these guys sponsored the Trader Joe's video the other week. And I really like them because it's a small company. The owner is a super nice guy, but this is the only wine, literally, in the world that does this. They have a nutritional label on back. It's vegan. Mm. It's vegan, it's dry farmed, zero chemicals, zero sugar added. I did some research. Most wines have sugar added and up to 75 chemicals, one of which is called Mega Purple, and it's really bad. These guys only have 0.26 grams of sugar and carbs per glass, meaning the whole bottle has less than three carbs, it is basically organic. It's dry farmed, meaning they never add water besides rainwater. And it's the only sugar-free keto wine on the market. And you guys over on Instagram stories loved it. A few people on the Trader Joe's video loved it. And it's not only tasty, but when you drink it, you don't get that feeling of like a fog effect or like a headache because there's no chemicals in there. So because I don't have my wine decanter, I'm gonna use my this is an aerator. Art and I got this at McCormick Place literally 10 years ago. And what it does... Check your potatoes. Okay, thank you. Is that it aerates the wine while you pour it. And it's kind of like a quick decanter. I'm going to pour a couple glasses. <laughs> Anders said, uh, damn, I've never seen a baseball match as well. I feel very un-American. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, I really like this company. I like the guy who owns it. In the description box at the bottom is a link. Use the uh, promo code FLAVECITY and you can get $15 off shipping for three bottles of the Palo 61. They have white, red, and rosé. I think it's fantastic and you're gonna love it. Check your pot. Okay, first let's check the beef. 
I'm going to flip it no matter what. There we go. Now looking we're better. getting better, right? That's looking better. Now we're getting better. Push it down again. And we'll do that. Char Troyer in the house. Oh, Char hello, from Char. Michigan. Hello, hello, governor. So I'll just take the lid off of that. So if you're just joining, we're in the heart of dinner right now. We're making a steak dinner. We have grass-fed carrot finished. Yes, you didn't mishear me. Carrot finished beef from a Flav City fan who started a new business. They reached out to me. They sent me a big box of beef. Mad love to them. I hope they do well. Shepherd meats, right? So we're doing filet mignon and the cap of the ribeye. This is just the tip, the actual cap of the ribeye that has all that fat. With that, we're serving perfectly boiled potatoes drenched in ghee, salt, and herbs. And we're making blistered asparagus with insane sauce. So, the pan's pretty hot, and you can see it's starting to cook. And this is ultimately what we're going for. All right, look at that. That piece right there, I want it to look like everywhere. Joseph Finley with 9.99 super chat. Oh my God! Slightly drunk donation on the line. <laughs> I will buy the Palo 61 next. Also, great podcast, guys. Thank okay. you, Joseph. I mean, a few things about that. James Finley is such an amazing guy. He seems to equate live streams with drinking and gives a lot of super chats when he's doing that. So thank you. Uh, the Flav City podcast is taken off. You guys are loving it. New episodes every Tuesday. Just search Flav City on any platform you want. It's really, really fun. I think like we need to like put uh, any donations from Joseph into like a temporary account in case they get annulled afterwards. For sure. <laughs> Just kidding, man. <laughs> For sure. Oh, that's so good, you guys. So good. Um, so now someone remind me to check these potatoes in about, I don't know, 10 minutes. I do the stabbing method, right? So what does that mean? I use, this is my stabbing knife. Did you call him James again? Because Joseph just said it's oh, Joe. I'm sorry, Joseph, okay. yes. I blame it on the wine that I had a sip of. What my, you don't want them to be so tender they fall apart. You want them to have a little resistance. So this is my designated stabbing knife. I've had this knife, you guys, for literally 20 years. It's so crappy, I don't use it for anything except poking vegetables. Uh, Clark, I gotta read this thing. Thanks, guys, for sharing what you know. You've helped me to lose 50 pounds. Thanks, you are an answer to prayers. Way 50? to go, man. 50 pounds. High yeah, five. boy. High five, Clark. Way to go. So I'm going to salt my cap of the ribeye. And I heard someone else say they got this uh, Redmond Real Salt. It's a game changer. I still have my promo code somewhere. If you go to the, the video I talked about, it was... What the heck was it? It was always oh, the immune system video. If you go to the immune system boosting video, I have the link. It's just an amazing salt. Another amazing company. You know what's so funny, you guys? As my brand has gotten cleaner and cleaner... I was wondering to myself like about a year ago, are there brands that are small enough to work with me that have a budget and you know, am I limiting myself in terms of revenue? Because keep in mind, this is my job, this is my career. And I'm like, man, all the, all the crappy companies have the big budgets. As I've refined my brand, only good companies have been attracting me and, and contacting me. It's amazing. It's, it's such a, like a, a testament to what you put out there, right? So as I stay true and only preach to you clean, authentic ideas, and my values, these brands are finding me, like the wine company, like Epic, like Thrive Market. It's just really, really exciting to know these brands see me, and I don't have to rely on like the crappy brands that I don't want to work with because I would never have you put that in your body, right? I gotta answer Paula's question. She's asking what that wine is again. Ah, yes. So it's in the description box, you guys, is my promo code. So just click the link. You have to get three bottles. Let me show the other bottles over here, Artie. So we have, this is my favorite. This is the rose. I'm all sorry, day, this is the, no, this is the rosé, rosato, and by the way, it's from Tuscany, it's 100% organic from Tuscany, this is the red, or the rosso, so Secco is the, the brand, the uh, yes, the Secco is Secco the club. club, and this is the white one, Art, Bianco, so you get three bottles, they're about $22 each, and instead of $20 shipping, you get it for $5 using Flav City promo code, but I'm telling you guys, I love the guy who came up with this, Johnny P loves it, hey, Mizzy. To have 0.2 grams of sugar in a glass of wine with no added chemicals, I think one of the biggest lies in the grocery store now is also the wine industry. They don't have to put anything on the ingredient list. They put up to 75 chemicals. It is totally crazy. Here's a good question. That's cool stuff. Is it organic even without the USDA label? Yeah, so they do have organic ones with the label. This one isn't certified organic, but I talked to the owner, owner and they organic farm. They just don't have the budget to always certify organic. That's the cool thing about going to small companies and small farmers markets. These small farmers sometimes don't have the money and the red tape to cut through all that regulation, but it still is organic. So 
every bottle you see at the grocery store, if, unless it's organic, has really nasty chemicals. And even the ones that are organic, they use organic approved chemicals. It's bad news. So I like those guys a lot. I think for the holidays, they should blow up because people need to uh, learn more about that. Okay, so Art, here's what I want to do. This Services guy has been searing that. for a while. That's beautiful, right? That's uh, very beautiful. I actually though. want to take this out of the pan for right now and move this guy closer. Wow. Wow, beautiful. So the thinking is, actually, I'm going to let Art explain this. So Art is a big fan of America's Text Kitchen and Cooks Illustrated. Can you explain to everybody, by the way, for all our Texas fans out there, that shirt is for you? Good story. Stand in front of the steak, Art. Can you explain to everyone? Oh, hey, Rose. Can you explain oh, to everyone nice. the method of searing high and searing low and how that cooks through the steak through? Yeah, it's all about evenness and, you know, get into a good state of... Oh. Uh-oh. Too much smoke. Uh-oh. <laughs> Look what I did, Rose. That's the first time that's happened. No, uh, well, when, I've been, when I've been here. It happens a lot when I have... Uh... Okay. This is fun. <laughs> Hold on a second. All right, so I'll see if I can answer any questions in the meantime. Anyways, you want to get to an even, evenly cooked steak really smoky, to your desired huh? doneness. And Might not uh, be good for her. by flipping it often with the okay. lower temperature, you get to a more evenly cooked steak. So yeah, so that's th what we want to the do. thinking is when you have a seared steak, sometimes that sear mark goes too deep into the meat, and the way you prevent that is by searing it hard in the beginning. But then lowering the heat down to medium low. Aye. Yeah, you don't well, want to. You don't want to have that really big gray band between the outside and the nice, uh, hopefully pink inside, unless you're doing I think it well done, which is. Uh, you might yes, want to move her so I can open up the shirt. door or something. Uh, you don't want that uh, that big gray band there. There's Rose. Who burnt the popcorn? Lol. Aye. Okay, I'm gonna flip this one too now. It's gonna go off again for sure, guys. But look at the crust on the meat. It's oh, almost, yeah. It's almost worth it. So now we got the asparagus. See, that's what I'm talking about, you guys. Hey. <laughs> hey. So this is almost done. That's what happens when you're really cooking, right? That's right. Can you wave it with a towel, Ben? Yeah, yeah. Wave City, more like Crust City, am I right? It doesn't matter. More like what? Crust City. Yeah, Crust City. Hey, Bebo. So guys, I wanted to add a little bit of onions and garlic in there. So I'm going to really quickly add the onions. So the idea is the pan is hot for the asparagus. If I were to add the onions and the garlic earlier, they would burn. Yes, and I just want to cook them through. It is a Bucky's t-shirt. But they're going to have a little bit of crunch still on it. So a little bit of red onions. I've never, I feel like I'm on a reality show here. I gotta cook the meal in a certain amount of time with the fire alarm going off. Don't worry, that's not attached to the actual fire department. So a little bit of <laughs> red onions. Then I'll put a couple cloves of garlic. Don't worry, Rose is chilling, but show Rose. She doesn't care. She's just chilling. Hey Rose. Say hello. Well, you just got a $20 super chat from Daniel Galeana. Mad love from Austin, Texas. Wow. Thank you. Met you at the Whole Foods. Oh, See Daniel. You. Yeah, thank you, Daniel. See you in San Antonio when you come down. Hey, oh, yeah. So much. Yeah. Hi, Rose. Hello. Okay, so Rose is chilling. She doesn't care. Oh, Guys, Rose is in the kitchen every day. She loves the smell and everything. So, Art, a little bit of garlic. Whoa. A little bit of onion. This is fun. This is totally out. Bobby unhinged here. So we'll mix up that. And that's almost done. So now is actually the time I want to salt that. Because we already got the blister on there. Check the potatoes. Check the potatoes. Can you guys come over and help me? This is getting a little much here. So now I got to take this steak out. Somebody's dog just heard the fire alarm and is hiding in their house now. <laughs> Art uh, sounds like Mr. Bill when he's talking to Rose. <laughs> okay, so let's kill the heat on the... Thank you, Ben. Everyone give a round of applause for Desi. She's uh, waving the towel. So look, Art, this is still too firm for my liking. This is my stabbing knife. It's 
The small ones might be done, but the big ones aren't. Actually, small ones are done. So, <laughs> Have you pushed the, uh, the, the uh, pause button? I don't think there is a pause button. What? I mean, I don't think so. You can take a look if you want. I can entertain people. You want to take a look at it? Well, I'm, I guess oh, I'm yeah. Gonna... Yeah, I'll hold it real quick. All right, Art's going to take a look because Desi doesn't want to climb the uh, Where thing. Where is it? Uh, it's in the hallway. You might need to bring a chair over there. <laughs> this is fun, right? Cooking, fire alarm. It's pretty smoky. By the way, look at this, you guys. It's pretty smoky in the house, but Rose doesn't care. Right? Rose is like, ah, hey, Rosie. Yeah, it doesn't have a pause button, right? Hey, Look at Art. Look at this. Art the mall task. No, no good? We could just open the window and move Rose out of the way. You know? She's fine over there. Okay. Open the door in my uh, second office. Fun. Okay. <laughs> we got a $5 super chat from Tyler, Texas. Whoa. Come back, Art. From Who Sarah Murphy. That? Do you know her? Sending love from Tyler, Texas. Come back sometime. Would love to hear about the time you spent here. Love you guys so much. Well, thank you so much, Sarah. Tyler rocks. I That's hope sweet you. Come of you. Back maybe in the winter for a visit. So. All right. so now the steak goes back in the pan, you guys, because I turned the heat down on the pan. And now it's time to cook the steak through. It's already seared, right? Now we got to cook it through. But I do want to get some of these potatoes out of here. Who think got to pour a glass of that wine? We might need that <laughs> sooner than later. So those feel good. Let me see how the big potatoes. The key is what I do, you guys, after these come out of the water, because while they're still hot, you actually put them back into the hot pan, the pot, with a generous amount of butter and salt, and it soaks down into the, almost like the core, it creates this amazing salty crust that is absolutely lovely. So I think we're pretty much, I'm gonna give that one more minute. It's just a lot of smoke coming off of the pan here. That's yeah, it's a lot of smoke, it's okay. People are saying you should have a little fan that you put in the hallway towards the, uh, Smoke detector and blow. I should. I should. What do you think, Rosie, huh? What do you think? I think, you guys, Rosie is just blooming like nobody's business. Her, look at those cheeks. Are and those just the cutest cheeks ever? Huh? D Brown, $5 super chat. Just D. took my dad shopping in Milwaukee. All Bobby approved items. He loves the videos. D sent me an email after the Bears lost on Sunday. It just said, wide left. <laughs> He's there. He's a Packers fan. Appreciate yes. that, D. Thanks. Rose. It's over 17 pounds, 10 ounces. Her cheeks are gonna explode. When I came back from California filming videos with Thomas, she gained more size, more width, more length. You're a super baby. You're a super baby, you know that? Mm -hmm. Oh my Somebody God. Somebody said fake meat. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know what that means. So now yes, I wanna... For all who have been asking, that's a Bucky shirt. Look at the steer on that now. That's gorgeous. That is looking good. So that's, I mean, that's worth the fire alarm going off, right? The fire detector, I should say. Okay, smoke, now. Smoke detector. Smoke detector. So these finish cooking through. See that color on the asparagus, you guys? That's the way to eat asparagus. It's super exciting and very, very flavorful. I love that not word. <laughs> right? Okay, now let's get the taters out. Ugh. You guys want a free facial? All right, come on over. It's kind of oily in here. I'll open up your pores. Stand right above the thing, you guys. Ready? We're going to the spa on one, two, three. Ah, you're welcome. See, I'm not just a cook. I'm an estetrician too. Your pores have never been cleaner. Now, here's the key art. We get them right back into the pot. Right, let's come over here. And here's where things get fun. We take a really big knob. Are you charging extra for the facial? And I, we're family. I can't charge you for that. We put copious amounts of ghee in there. When will we stop? <laughs> okay, that's good for now. Then we take some fine salt. Ready to go, Rihanna. Keep, keep making them until we make them all. Then we'll go in here, Arthurion. We'll grab a little bit of this dill that we got at the market. So why am I storing my dill like this? Because it's a hack, right? Just like parsley and cilantro, store it in water, cover it with a paper or plastic bag in the fridge. It'll last you. 10 to 14 days. It's unbelievable. Then I'll cut this guy up. And then you put the lid back on the pot and the residual heat of the pot creates the salt crust that is to die for. It is so tasty. I'll throw that in there and then mix it up. 
Then warm it up, Chris. Yeah, actually, you know what's even easier than mixing it? You do this. You grab the lid. There it is. Shake, shake, shake. Yeah. Shake your potatoes like that. Uh, yeah, people are commenting on how you said esthetician. You said esthetician like an obstetric esthetician. <laughs> <laughs> what's the word? Esthetician, but Esta. you said like esthetician. Yeah, I said. Which somebody's <laughs> uh, unlikely critic says that was like an obstetric esthetician. <laughs> so, Art, this is looking really good. I'm going to cook the filet on the sides a little bit. A push test or anything like that? So, yeah, you guys, I mean, I've been cooking steak a long time. I can feel that's about medium rare. But what's the point of being a guessing game when you have grass fed carrot finished? If you're just joining us now, we're making 100% grass fed carrot finished beef from a company called Shepherd Meats. It was started by a Flav City fan, and she actually sent me the sweetest email that I motivated her to finally start the company she always wanted to start. So I, buy a labor. Thanks I thought that was nice. Coffee. And she was nice enough to show me, to send me a bunch of this. So we have goat, we have lamb in there. It's amazing. Now, Art, I'll just take the thermometer, put it in the middle, and check it out. So this is definitely done. We're at 138. So I'm going to get that out of the pan. Now let's go to the cap of the ribeye. 137, 141. How about this guy? There's so much fat in this. You could actually cook it. Oh, oh it's hot. Okay. So I'm going to get these out, actually. And then no more smoke. Then we have to make the insane sauce here. Oh, I want to butter baste them. Actually, you know what? No, what? Let's do this. Put them back in the pan. Turn the heat off the pan. All right, let's go right here real quick behind you. Turn it off. Uh, yeah, it turns it off. Yeah, off. Now, come over here, Art. We're using, now we're using actual butter butter, not ghee. We're going to put a big knob right in there. Then I'm going to take a couple cloves of garlic. And, <laughs> hope that fire truck's not coming here. Yeah. <laughs> we'll throw the garlic right in there. And then I'll take a couple sprigs of thyme. How's that smell, Rosie girl? And I'll throw that right in there, right? And then switch sides, Art. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take a spoon. This is the classic French way of finishing a steak. And I might need a little more fire on here. You basically try to melt the butter. Oh, no, it's not good. See, this, it's magic, you guys. It's just a combination thyme of fresh, yeah, thyme and butter. Don't sleep on the garlic, though, right? Yeah, garlic, but and you just melt it like this. I could actually just take the knob of butter here. Uh, Taylor's asking, are the videos from California for this weekend on yours or on the other guy's channel? Uh, no, so Thomas, those videos Hello. are going to come out November 15th weekend. The first of eight videos, you guys. So in case you don't know, I was in LA last weekend and I did collaborations with Thomas DeLauer. We had a great time. We hit it off big time. We filmed eight videos in two days, and I filmed an extra video at Sprouts Farmer's Market that's coming out this weekend. So we filmed eight videos from Costco to Aldi, breakfast recipes, we did Whole Foods, we did a fast food review at um, Chick-fil-A, unbelievable. So all right, check it out. Now the butter melted, and you just wanna like turn the meat and then scoop it like that. That's the way to do it, right? Is there a link to this uh, beef company in the description? I, I didn't give him a link. I should have given him a link. Look them up. Shepherd's, Shepherd Meats. Next time I cook something with their beef, I'll get a promo. Somebody also asked what kind of pan that is. Yeah, this is a Stobe cast iron pan, 12 inches. S-T-A-U-B. Yeah, it's like Lodge, but it's enameled and it's fancier. It's also pricier, but it's really nice. Now, Art, should I throw away that extra butter in there or no? No way, man. No way. Come over here. Bobby, un día necesites hacer un video o live stream en español. Oh, <laughs> oh no. no quieres me hablar y cocinar en español? Oh, muy, muy malo. Okay, we're pretty much done with everything. Our potatoes, check it out, Art. Oh, they're getting happy. Look at this, Art. Oh. Will the butter ruin the crust on the steak? No, no way. Don't you worry about that. All right, so all we have to do is make the insane sauce. I'm gonna put a little bit of tin foil over that just so it doesn't get cold. Also, what was the coupon code for Palo 61? Also, for the, for the wine, it's just Flav City. Go in the description box, click the link, 
and you have to buy three bottles. You can get three red if you love red. Just use Flav City. You get $5 shipping instead of $15. No, instead of $20. It's a great deal. Like I said, if you're just joining, the only sugar-free keto wine on the market with no chemicals added, grown in Tuscany. Unbelievable. So a lot of people think they only have to rest steak about three minutes. I think a steak like that could rest for five to 10 minutes and it's so hot inside. The juices are so warm, it won't get cold. The longer you give it, the more those juices redistribute and it's really juicy. Because if you cut into a hot steak, what happens, Art? It uh, gushes out all its juices. It gushes out all its juices. Caroline, Bobby chopped up some dill and put it in the potato. I did. That's, that's the green thing you were saying. I did, you can use any fresh herb you would like, my dear Caroline. Uh, Taylor saw your Reynolds ad on Insta. Good for you, that's a big company. Yeah, yeah, they, they contacted me months ago and I said no, because they wanted me to do something with tinfoil and I don't believe in cooking with tinfoil. And they said, hey, how about our unbleached, 100% natural uh, parchment paper? I said, yeah, sounds good. So they wanted a, a fall recipe, so I gave them the tomato soup. Daniel Galeanas from Austin said, hey, Bobby, would you like a cast iron pan shaped like the state of Texas? I can send you one, let me know. <laughs> I'll let you know, Daniel, thank you. Right now I have no more room. Maybe once we get the new house, then uh, there'll be room for that. All right, so all right, let's make really quick. Man, this wine, you guys, this wine is just crazy good, I'm telling you. And trust me, they didn't even pay me that much money. I just love the company. I love the guy. I made a few bucks, but I want you to have a keto wine, especially for the holidays. Let's People make. are asking how thick those sticks are. Um, well, you tell me. So the filet mignon is pretty thick. That's about an inch and uh, three quarters. And these, when they lie flat, are about an inch 25. So, yeah. How, 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 much, how thick your steaks, huh? You got two inches or what? How much you bet? <laughs> <laughs> I like that, Desi. <laughs> okay, Rose, we gotta make insane sauce. Insane sauce is an avocado sauce, avocado oil mayonnaise, that is so much flavor, Rose, that you can put it on what I call an old leather shoe, and it's gonna taste good, right? So one day soon you'll have it. It basically is these ingredients, all right, check it out. It's avocado oil mayonnaise, which I don't have any homemade. It's a little bit of stone ground or Dijon mustard. It's a little bit of sriracha sauce. It's a little bit of toasted sesame oil. It's lemon juice, salt, pepper, and that's it. Wait, somebody said I can't hear you. Let's see, Ooh, the batteries are fine. Yeah, hopefully you guys can hear hopefully me. that's one person. Yeah, so we'll just do a little bit of mayonnaise. Check your volume, Robin. And then the side. I'll do a little bit of salt. So, I don't think, babe, is the insane sauce green beans in the cookbook or no? Or did it come out? It is? What's it served with? The insane sauce? Yeah. Wait a second, somebody said can't hear you again. What's going on here? Is it just one person? A couple people now. I can't oh, that, hear it's you. Just oh, one person, I can yeah. hear you, okay. Oh, tamari too. So, a little bit of splash of tamari, and you might think this is getting into like Asian land with the tamari soy sauce, which is gluten-free soy sauce, and toasted sesame oil, but it's not. It's what I call umame boosters. And they add such a backbone of flavor to anything you put them on. I often use them for my salad dressings and my coleslaw. And then I don't use the uh, sriracha with the rooster on the bottle anymore, because if you read the ingredients, it has two really nasty preservatives. It's the dragon. This is the dragon, the Sky Valley. Buy it at Walmart, it's only $5. It's much cleaner. So a little spray of that will go some lemon juice. You can use this as a dressing for anything. It's yeah, called insane Finley. sauce because it's insanely flavorful. Finley, that was a classic skit that you just described. Insane sauce is this Ah, oh, here, bring it over. So this is a cool recipe from the book. Thank you, my love. This is in the Mama Said Eat Your Veggies chapter. Insane blistered green beans with reverse seared spice crusted cauliflower steaks and a Greek yogurt lemon sauce. This makes sexy vegetables, right? That's why I call myself the Justin Timberlake of veggies. I'm bringing sexy back, right? So once again, the Amazon link is down below. Because of you, it was a number one bestseller on Amazon. Because of you, over 640 five-star reviews because of you. It's coming to Amazon next week, I think. And if it does well, Costco. oh, it's coming to Costco. You're actually listening to what I say. Wow, I shocking. Thank you, Art. It's it coming to Costco on a limited run. But if it does well, they told me they'll order it nationwide. So let's continue to put the support for the holidays. If you want someone to help lose weight, interested in keto or just interested in losing weight without sacrificing flavor, 125 plus recipes with photos, macros, nutrients, and detailed instructions to help you rock these recipes like a mouse. Monica uh, Schwab, Schwab, Schwab said, 
I'm bringing veggies back. That's right. I'm bringing veggies back, baby. You know Eve it. Cities. <laughs> Don't know how to <laughs> boil old cauliflower. Uh, what else did I say? So dumb. Lemon juice. Oh, so that's is it. good, though. <laughs> Thank you, Monica. <laughs> you got to weave in something about the uh, boiling a fart, right? We ain't boiling Brussels sprouts to make a fart. <laughs> That works pretty well, actually. That stupid smell blew the kitchen apart. <laughs> we'll stop. This is we're done. Very, very seventh grade. So that's insane sauce, but just check it for seasoning. You want it to be very aggressively seasoned. It needs a little more lemon. But that's good, though. The, the, the heat sneaks up on you just a little bit. The I'm going to do a little God, more this, sriracha. And just a touch more tamari. So I like tamari because it's gluten-free soy sauce, and a lot of people in the paleo or keto community don't like soybeans, and I typically stay away, but fermented soybean sauce or soy sauce is so good and has so much flavor. I don't like using coconut aminos because they don't have quite the same flavor. So that's done. That's insane sauce. Woohoo! We're ready to plate and cut some steak up and see what the dealio is, uh, right? If you were to give up zesting citrus or spicy crusts forever, which would you give up? Spicy right, crust? Not, not spicy. Not spicy. Or not. Clarify the question because this is serious. <laughs> this is very serious. This is a zesting. So Travis, uh, so we'll wait for that revised question. Travis asked the question, I'm very skinny and the last thing I want is to lose weight. Will that cookbook still apply to me? I'm obviously still looking to eat healthy. Yeah, so these recipes are designed to help you eat clean. If you want to lose weight, these will help you but they're so nutrient dense that if you eat this plus <clears throat> extra snacks throughout the, <coughs> throughout the day, <coughs> I'm getting a smoke. I wish there was a mute button. <coughs> I got the black lung pop. Uh, you won't lose weight with it if you don't want to. It's not that kind of cookbook because all the uh, recipes are low carb, moderate protein, moderate fat, which is a great recipe for either lowering weight or maintaining it. It's all about portion size, and if you're trying to gain weight, eat more food, uh, throw shakes and smoothies in be between meals. That's what I do. I'm always trying to gain some extra weight because I can't boost it up. I have protein shakes that you see me make on uh, Instagram all the time. All the butter <clears throat> will not make you lose weight too. <laughs> yeah. Now this is one of the one. This is a meal that's not going to make you lose weight because what are you doing? You're combining protein with starch with potatoes. That's where you get in problems, right? That's where if you're trying to lose weight or God forbid you're a diabetic or you have uh, chronic inflammation, never mix meat with carbs because that slows down your metabolism, that spikes your insulin, that's when you get to troubles and that's the problem with the American diet. They preach to you this stupid food pyramid that's high in grains and cereal. That's the worst crap for you ever. You should not be eating that. If you had to give up either zesting citrus or having good crusts on meat, ah. which would you give up? Zesting citrus, because I can still juice it, right? Good I crust. Still go to the coffee shop. <laughs> it sounds like a, a Seinfeld. I can still juice it. Okay, let's cut this steak, Art, and see what's inside here. And then the beautiful thing is we basically have a sauce built in here. So first I'm going to cut the fillet mignon in half. Fillet mignon. Yeah. So how is that cooked to your liking? For me, to be honest, it's a shade over what I normally do, but it's 100% fine. And then for this guy, first I'll just cut it in half this way. That's really nice. So you actually want to cook the cap of the ribeye towards the medium side. It's still blushing pink in there. And just to make sure it tastes really good, this, it cuts it cuts like carrots. <laughs> Look at that. You're just looking for excuses to eat. Wow, wow, we wow. Mm. That cap of the ribeye, Rose, that is so good. Mm. So the cap has the most marbling and the most fat of almost any cut of meat on the animal. So you pretty much can't mess it up. Let me just try a little piece of the filet. Sop it up in that butter. Oh my God. This is so good. Oh my God. So let's build a plate, right? Is Rose, the, come over here. D Brown's asking if the guide is on Amazon yet. Um, no, not yet, D. I just haven't had time to put the final touches on it. But Desi, we're gonna try to finish that this week, right? Do you mind that I call you D rather than Dirk? It's just I just read it quickly and I know your name's Dirk, but. If you haven't said hi to Rose yet, please say hi to her. Cause she's so pretty. She's so pretty, right? Mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna bring this over here. Oh, we gotta toss this. So all right, look, now I'll take, you don't wanna toss this while it's hot because you'll break the mayonnaise. What do I mean by that? Well, the heat will break the emulsion of the fat on fat. So you wanna wait for it to cool down just a little bit. Mm. Okay. Well, we got 849 people. Yeah. We almost broke the record of 1,000. You still have time to share right now if you wanted to, but hey, maybe we'll be back on Friday and we can break it on Friday. Mm. Wow. The keto wine with the steak. Rose, this is what life's all about, right? This is what it's all about. I mean, for you, it's all about milk. And you're a hell of a milk drinker, right? But that's delicious. So let's just mix this, Arthurion. Uncle Fart, as Maggie so kindly named him. Now look at that. If you have picky ears in the house, you think they're gonna eat that? Hex yeah, right? And it's dairy free. The whole recipe minus the butter is dairy free, but if you use ghee, it's essentially dairy free because you burn away the casein and the lactin, lactose. Okay, so we have that, we have that. Rose, this are potatoes that I boiled and then I put in a Thanks, ton Steve. of butter Thanks, Dirk. with herbs. Look at this art. Oh, the smell of that. The smell of perfectly boiled potatoes is unbelievable. Yep. Estratician. What'd you say? Estratician? <laughs> I said estratician. <laughs> I don't know. Word. I don't know. Word. It's like cruciferous or no, yeah. crunch, crunchiferous. Cur yeah, there's a, my favorite salad mix is at Trader Joe's and it's called Cruciferous Crunch Collection. For years, years, no joke, I've been calling it the Crunch Crunchiferous. And then I was doing it on Instagram stories and people kept sending me messages. It's pronounced cruciferous. And I'm like, words? What? Who? Where? Oh, uh, Taylor we're, said, do you know if Primal Kitchen new pasta sauces will be out in stores? I cannot find Yeah, them. I don't know why they're not out yet. Because they sent it to me, a big box. They, I'm on their VIP list. They're very nice to me. But yeah, I was just at Whole Foods today with Arthur filming a video about pasta and sauce, what to look forward to. And I didn't see it there. So hopefully soon, because this week I mixed half Alfredo with half marinara, tossed that with my favorite gluten-free pasta from Trader Joe's, and put some vegetables in there. It was, was that so Mal good. Malfredo? Oh, uh, yeah, it was Malfredo, exactly. Or Aranara? <laughs> Some, Al 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 any Al of those. Yeah. Any of those work. So here's how I would serve this, right? Family style. I would put down a nice molto generoso portion of blistered green beans. Then I want to use a clean spoon for this. The beauty of this, too, is that there's literally an Olympic sized swimming pool of butter in the bottom of this dish. So I'll take the taters. These are organic taters because taters are on the dirty dozen list. Please, please, please always buy organic potatoes. These are organic fingerling potatoes. You can get them from Whole Foods or Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's is a better deal. So we'll put that and then look at this. I just take some extra butter and I drizzle it on top like that because butter makes it better. Anders is drooling hmm. at midnight before going to sleep. <laughs> So now I'll take some of that fillet minion. So once again, a Flav City fan started this company called Shepherd Meat, and it's 100% grass-fed, carrot-finished. It's finished on carrots the last six months of its life, and that helps with the marbling. When I heard that, I was like, what the what? Then I'll slice this slight art. I can literally almost cut this with a blunt spoon or something. This is nice. crazy. We rarely eat steaks in here, so I just don't ever have an appetite for a big hunk of meat, but this is what it's all about. This is gonna be so good. If I'm eating meat, I wanna eat this kind of meat, right? And then I'll take, see, this is all this leftover juice here, but I also have this juice, so what, what do I do this? All right, check it out. I just go a little river. As Emerald would say. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, babe, bam, look at this. Oh, my God, who's a, not, who's a naughty boy? Who's a naughty boy? <laughs> So weird. <laughs> Daddy's weird, huh? Daddy's weird. He's weird. There it is, you guys. Killer steak dinner with garlic and butter basted grass fed beef, perfectly boiled butter and salt potatoes, and blistered asparagus with insane sauce. I am so excited to eat this. Art has been requesting steak, specifically, which one, Art? Flat iron. Flat iron steak. We didn't have flat iron, I'm but- I'm still gonna be requesting it because it's out on the plate. Yes, and speaking of, you know, I already tasted the beef. Raise your hand if you wanna see Art try this, and I think Art needs his own glass 
of yeah there, there already was a uh, hashtag feed art earlier. is it trending is it trending it's not right. trending yet. okay but. here's art's wine let's move this knife away from rosita and hashtag i'll get hashtag feed art here's your sp spork <laughs> they have one more Joseph spork finley who's a naughty boy <laughs> wife and i are cracking up <laughs> <laughs> do that again I, I no, no 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 it's done i'm gonna go and play it back then <laughs> okay everyone say hi to the man wearing the Hello, everybody. Bucky's t-shirt. Hey, Rose. Hey, oh, look, Rose is like, who's that? Is that Uncle Farturo? It's him and these. Is this mine? Uh, yes, that's a brand new one. Yeah, there. Uh, thank you. So, I mean, what, what do you recommend I go in for first? I have no recommendations. This right. is the fillet. That's the fillet. That's a tender piece of meat. Uh, right? It's non-GMO carrots, yes. You don't worry about that. Try purple potato. Oh my gosh, a purple potato. Look, Look at, at that. that. Look at that color. I never thought I'd see the day. Hold wow. on. Hold that. Oh my God, it's like neon psychedelic wow. perps. Here we go. Yeah, Taylor, don't use canola. Use avocado oil or extra virgin coconut oil. Very nice. So they're asking what kind of wine to pair it with, Farturo? Obviously. Probably a Palo 61. Palo, that's right. Palo, sorry. So guys, once again, the link for this keto sugar-free chemical free Tuscan wine is down below. It's a really small company, but I love their wine and I love, oh, Here's I love the cap that. Of the ribeye. Hold on, show that again. Oh my God. See how the fibers is it, is there? It, is it glistening? It is. And those muscle fibers will literally melt in your mouth. Yeah, this is um, a, a, Tusc a Tuscan red. I appreciate you, Paula. That's good. Isn't that crazy good, bro? Get yourself some of that beef. It's good. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him a shout out next time. We'll give you guys a link there. Uh, no, that Palo 60 wine is only available online. It's a very small company. They grow it on a family farm in Tuscany. And each bottle only has less than three grams of net carbs and sugar. Art looks like Steve Kerr. We've heard that one before, I've heard right? I've before. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. Does avocado oil spoil? Yes. All food grade oils will spoil eventually, my friend. Okay. So Art is a happy camper. Very Rose. Nice. Not yet, but you will have grass-fed beef in the near future, my dear. Right? Excellent. Good job, Arthurian. Yeah, good job. You cooked it, man. Good oh, job. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So it was worth it, guys. We set off the fire alarm probably half a dozen times. But who cares? Right? That's what cooking's all about. What happened for sitting dinner afterwards? Oh, it's too hard now with Rose and everything. Rose demands a lot of attention with that. So. Thank you, Joseph. Yeah, Art, we don't have time. Art is much smarter than Steve Kerr. Well, well, you know, you. We'll, we'll do a sitting dinner one time where I don't cook, where we just sit and have family dinner. But cooking and then doing dinner afterwards is very hard. Wow. Those potatoes. Okay, listen. Here. We barely eat potatoes here because they're a simple carbohydrate. Why is that bad? Simple carbohydrates are high in sugar. They're high in the glycemic index. They spike your blood sugar. When you eat carbs like that with meat, it's not the best for you, right? If you're trying to lose weight, if you're trying to um, get off your diabetes medication, you cannot have carbs like that. It's a rare treat for us, right? But if you're going to eat carbs like potatoes, Eat it that way. That is a joy to eat. Those potatoes are fluffy and buttery and coated in butter. They're just so delicious, Rose. Oh my gosh. So this weekend on YouTube, we'll have my Sprouts Farmer's Market haul from LA from last week. We'll have a video that Art and I just filmed today from Walgreens. We're gonna do a Walgreens haul. Is it possible to find uh, healthy food there? We also filmed a video today all about pasta and pasta sauces, what to avoid, what to buy, and why. That'll come out next week. I think next week I'm also going to film a video about how to buy seafood, wild versus farm-raised, and what to look for, what to avoid. And I have a Thanksgiving video I want to uh, film about if you're going to make the homemade Thanksgiving dinner, use this chicken stock, use that ground corn meal, use this pumpkin, use that butter, stuff like that. And if you have any other ideas, just let me know. But that is it, you guys. Cookbook link is down in the description box. If you're looking for a holiday gift for someone who wants to eat healthy and lose weight, this is your ultimate clean eating guide without sacrificing flavor. I had a great time hanging out with you. There's a 50-50 chance that Art and I might do this again on Friday. So if you want us to do it again, you let us know. But I want to plate this up for Desi and for Art before it gets cold. So we will leave you like Art and I always do and Rose do. We say unto you, hashtag... Keep on cooking, mad love, and peace. Mm -hmm. You're such a good girl. She loves the lights, you guys. She's going to be the best YouTuber ever because when the lights are on and Uncle Farturo has the camera, she's happy as a clam, just like dear old daddy. Okay, let's serve some dinner, young lady. All right.
Good night, everybody. Peace. See ya. Awesome time. Thanks for tuning in. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bu what part didn't you understand? Bye. The bu or the bye? Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.